Father in heaven, as we look at your word this morning, I pray, Lord, that we would go out of this place stronger than we came in. Would anyone say amen? amen. We pray, Lord, we would encounter you in a fresh way, Lord Jesus. We pray that our eyes would be lifted up to you and not down to the ground, Lord. We pray, God in heaven, be with us as we look at your word. May we have open ears, open hearts, and open souls. In Jesus' name, and God's people say, Amen. Amen. I'm going to try and plow or fly through this if I can. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your immune system. I know, I know, I know. You live in Ireland, and in Ireland at the moment, there are approximately five and a half million immunologists. There's also five and a half million virologists and epidemiologists. So I know you've all got the degrees. I'd say the universities are going to be empty because we're all so used to it at this stage. But I want to talk to you about three types of immune systems this morning, just for, just for a couple of seconds, just to give you an idea of where I'm going this morning. The first, of course, is the one most of you are completely and utterly familiar with, and that is your physical immune system or your biological immune system. Now, you're so familiar with this. I mean, we could pro I could make you vomit so with so much information about what we all know about it, but just in brief, your physical or your biological immune system protects you against what are called pathogens, which are also come in the form of viruses or in bacteria that come into your body. Your physical immune system kicks off and defeats or attacks or defends your body against the attack from this virus, this pathogen, this foreign entity that has entered your system. However, there's two elements to your immune system that you know about, but I'm just going to use them here this morning for, for a purpose. And that is you have what's known as your innate immune system. That's the one you were born with. You came from your mother's womb with an immune system. You came, you came into the world with some of her immunity, the things that she was immune to. You're born with some of those immunities. But then you have what's called your adaptive immune system. And the adaptive immune system is the one we're all kind of talking about at the moment. And that's the one where a new virus comes along that you've never met before. And the virus says, hi, I want to move into your body. And your body says, who are you? And the virus says, I really, I'm really friendly. Honestly, just let me in. Oh, and by the way, here come all my friends. So that's what your adaptive system is there for, for some strange new pathogens that you haven't met before. And you respond to them in a new way. And so your system has to kick off and develop immunity. Or you can take vaccines or whatever. Well, however it works. Let me give you a, a classic example of the uh, innate. When I was born, I was born with certain immune um, strengths and so on and so forth. And I was also born with some immune weaknesses, but that's another day's story. Um, but one of the things that has happened to me recently is that I got COVID. <sighs> Hello, everyone. I got COVID. Now, it's about three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago, I got COVID. I tested positive, of course, is probably the better way to describe it. I wasn't unusually sick. I wasn't very sick. Um, but I got COVID. So up to that point, my system didn't know what COVID really was, but now it's bumped into COVID and it has adapted to defeat, attack and defeat COVID. I'm now immune. Hallelujah. <laughs> Would anyone say amen? amen? Oh, Lance, you're all, you don't know where he's going now this morning, do you? Anyway, that's your physical immune system, just to give you an idea that none of you are going to hug me, shake hands with me, touch me ever again. I'm going to wear a bell and show unclean. But that's just the reality of it. I had COVID. It wasn't that bad. Thank the Lord. I had taken the vaccines and so on and so forth. And that's not a part of political statement. Anyway, let me talk about another immune system. Your psychological immune system is actually really, really important as well. You have a system, or most people have a psychological immune system. And the psychological immune system, which has really only become described in the last kind of 20, 30, 40 years in reality. It was known before that, but now it's being called your psychological immune system. I read about it in a book called The Marshmallow Test by a guy called Walter Michel, a very famous writer on psychology. And he talks about it in this way. He says, basically, your psychological immune system is the system that kicks in when you have a bad experience. And I don't want your average bad experience, like you stubbed your toe, but your really bad experiences, like you become very sick, or when a visit to the doctor turns into a dangerous diagnosis, or when you lose your job, or when you lose a loved one. It's the system that kicks in to help you resist and not fall into a depressive episode as a result of the experiences that you're experiencing. Now, some people have a very strong, natural, or innate psychological immune system. Some people are just born bright and sunny. And some people are just born a little bit more cloudy. Some people are wake up and they see the world in positive terms. Some people just tend to see it in more negative terms. 
interestingly, people who see it in negative terms probably are a little bit more realistic than those of us who see it in two positive terms. But then you have, that, there's that system, so you have an innate system, but then you have an adaptive system. And your adaptive psychological system develops as you go along and you have a bad experience in life, and it doesn't turn out to be as bad as you thought it was. Or you get over, like the girl that broke your heart when you were 16 and met O'Keefe, and I'll never forgive you. The girl who broke your heart, somewhere along the line you go, actually having your heart broken maybe isn't such a bad thing. After all, your psychological immune system adapts to new experiences and new realities. Are you with me so far? Yeah. The next one is this, the spiritual immune system, which is what I want to really talk about today, your spiritual immune system. Because we know from the scriptures that we are body, soul, and spirit. We're not just physical animals. We're not just emotional or psychological, but we're also spiritual animals. So the spiritual uh, immune system also has an adaptive and it has an innate element of it. So as Christians, we have experienced some immunity. Let me give you one class of ex example. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins, rose from the grave on the third day, if you believe in him and you trust in him and you have faith in him, you are saved you are forgiven, you are redeemed by the work that Jesus did. Will anyone say amen? amen? Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It's not something that's up for debate. There is no condemnation other than the condemnation that we invite upon ourselves, which we can sometimes do. We can sometimes beat ourselves up. So that's the innate. But then there's also the adaptive spiritual immune system. And that's the system that works that as a Christian, you undergo certain experiences, sometimes bad experiences, to which you adapt spiritually by changing the way you think, changing the way that you approach, and changing what you believe about yourself, about your circumstances, and about your future. And it's to that immune system that I specifically want to talk this morning because I think we all need a spiritual boost. What are we immune to? Here's a good question. What is the Christian? You know, I'm a Christian, nothing can harm me. You know, I'm really strong, don't speak negative words. I'm going to be, no, I'm not going to have anyone that speak any negative words because nothing can harm me and I'm going to be absolutely fine. What is it that we are actually immune to as Christians? Well, as it turns out, not much in terms of life experience. Here's the words of Jesus. He said, I told you this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have Many trials and sorrows. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. So because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you're immune to trial or sorrow or difficulty or trouble. Are you with me? Yeah. Are we agreed on that? Yeah. But then the good news, Jesus says, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Because we're not just looking to ourselves or not just looking to what's in us. Now, as it turns out, the parallels between physical immunity, emotional immunity, and spiritual immunity are remarkable. They really are remarkable. And probably because we understand the spiritual world by understanding the physical world, believe it or not. That's why Paul said many of these things happen first physically and then spiritually. Our understanding is formed by physical things. So I want to look at just a couple of things that may give you the option. You can go for boost or burst your immune system. I hope you want to boost your immune system this morning, amen? amen? But you can also burst it. And I'm going to look at some of the things that we can do to boost or burst our immune system, both our physical, but especially our spiritual immune system. Here's the first one, don't get uncomfortable. Every one of us does this sometimes. The first thing is your diet. What you consume affects your immune system. If you are eating chips and burgers, all the time, like my sons would if they had the chance, then you will have a compromised immune system. You will not get the vitamins you need, you will not get the nutrients that you need to help your metabolism operate and function properly. You will undermine your own immune system by poor diet. But it's also true that you will undermine your spiritual immune system with your diet. If your diet consists of fiction and gossip and social media only. Oh, I like social media. I have my own little friends on social media. That's okay. I'm not taking a shot at anything. But if that's all you consume, 
then you are going to undermine your own spiritual immune system. Are you with me? You're going to undermine your own. If all you hear is the bad news, it's going to take you down, brothers and sisters. It's that simple. I read an excellent book during the summer by a guy called Ralph DeBelli. He said, the news is bad for you. You should stop reading it. He puts 34 essays as to why you should stop listening to the news. Very convincing. But my goodness, is that addiction to news hard? Yeah. Anyway. But here's what Jeremiah said. I'm going to use a couple of scriptures that maybe wouldn't normally use in these contexts. Here's what Jeremiah said. He said, Lord, your words were found and I ate them. And your words became to me the joy and the delight of my heart. One of the things that we consume if we are to have a healthy spiritual immune system is God's word, the Bible. And that's not a verse a day keeps the devil away, just for the record, okay? It means consuming it. Can you imagine if you read your Bible like this fellow's horsing into his burger? What are you doing, Michael? Like, hit me, Bible, Ellen Grant. Can you imagine, though? Can you imagine if you consumed with relish and with joy and took on board realizing the nutri nutritional value of the Bible? You ate in this way, your soul and your immune system, your spiritual immune system, would be protected. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. When you begin to read God's Word, something happens. And we'll, we'll get into that actually in a few minutes, but something happens when you begin to read God's Word. It actually literally, literally changes the way that you think. What about this one? The sedentary lifestyle. Lack of exercise. Now lads, this is going to affect you, believe it or not, physically. It's going to undermine your immune system. And I think at this time of the year when you kind of go over to the window and it's just rain and there's another blacker cloud coming over and the person on the weather says, cover up, you're all going to die. You know, when you kind of look at the weather, you can, oh, I don't feel like... But lacking in exercise, physical exercise, will have a profound effect on your immune system. Because it is known that when you exercise, and I'm not talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about just going for a walk, hello? Just moving around actually boosts your immune system. That people who exercise regularly have a healthier immune system. Now what are you talking about spiritually? What about spiritual exercises? No. I'm not covering everything that's in your spiritual immune system and everything in your physical immune system. This is just a sample of a couple of things. So if you're going, yeah, you, but you forgot about, I didn't forget about it, I just didn't include everything. I wanted to go as much as I felt the Lord was leading me. Here is spiritual exercise that's good for your immune systems. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Amen. 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 Serving others is the physical outworking of the spiritual exercise. Are you with me? When we serve others, it is a spiritual exercise that blesses us, that blesses others, and is a true virtuous circle. We actually end up better off. We make the lives of other people better off simply by serving. For us, maybe the real service area is in short servicing, serving your brothers and sisters in Christ in the family of God. Amen? Amen. No, this church is full of people. This is probably the one thing I was thinking about leaving out because I said, you know what? This isn't, this isn't even really a play. But you know what? Serving others, you are the beneficiary from it. You'll be stronger. You'll be fitter. You'll be more agile and more able for what comes at your life if you serve others. We're so far so good? Yeah. What's with this one? Sleep. Sleep is so important than anybody who's ever had young children. Bless your hearts is all I can say because sleep, do you know what people said to me, you know, before we had children, they said, get plenty of sleep, you're going to lose loads. I said, ah, you'll be grand. And then you're awake at three o'clock in the morning and you're just exhausted. Lacking sleep is really, really bad for you physically. Sleep will slowly but surely, lacking sleep will wear down your physical immune system. It will also wear down your psychological immune system because generally when we're awake, we're not thinking about flowers and roses. We're normally thinking about the things that aren't so great going on in our lives. We're awake at three and four in the morning wondering about our futures. Sleep is really important. But in in spiritual terms, we're not talking about spiritual sleep. Tom actually referenced it last week. We're not going, what's it? Oh, well, I'm just spiritually sleeping. I knew a guy years ago who used to say that when he went into prayer, he sometimes fell asleep, and he called it the sleep of the spirit. I thought, 
That's a handy one, isn't it? And then when you walk up, you say, in Jesus' name, amen. The sleep of the spirit. Wouldn't you love that? I just fell in the sleep of the spirit, darling. I'm sorry. I couldn't help you with the housework because I had to have the sleep of the spirit upon me. We're talking, obviously, resting. Trusting in God. Believing that he has your future. Believing that he holds the keys to what is coming in your life. Believing that he has seen long before you could ever see what was coming into your life. He could see what was coming into your life to make your spirit more adaptive. More adaptive. Here's what the scripture says in the Psalms. It's useless to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat. Why? For God gives rest to his loved ones. When we trust in him, when we put our future in his hands, when we expect our provision, our protection to come from him, we can rest in that. Would anyone say amen? amen. Resting is in such an important spiritual activity. It's an important physical activity. It's an important emotional activity. It's an important spiritual activity. One of the things that really affects our sleep, just a hint, just to drop you, because I read about this stuff, sad though that I am, watching screens late at night ruins your sleep pattern, okay? Watching screens late at night ruins your sleep pattern. Be careful, turn off the TV an hour before you go to bed. Go to bed and read your Bible. Amen? Amen. And then have some spiritual sleep afterwards. <laughs> Isolation is massively damaging. Massively damaging to your physical immune system, your psychological immune system, and your spiritual immune system. Now we know, because you know, because you listen to the news and you listen to social media, it's the same as I do, you know that they're now discovering that some of the outpourings or the outworkings from the pandemic has been the lockdowns and the isolation that that brought into people's lives caused an outbreak of depression and anxiety and loneliness and sadly even suicide as a result of the isolation that people were forced into initially but something happens after the initial forcing into isolation sometimes we become habituated in our isolation we become kind of comfortable in our own company however good or bad our own company is some people you really shouldn't be comfortable in your own company you're not doing yourself any favors but we do become habituated in our isolation. Now, I suppose none of you will have any difficulty guessing what Bible verse I'm going to put up for this one. You're going to, I'm going to put up the one from Hebrews. But before I do, do that, I want to quote the, the proverb that says, He who isolates himself rages against all sound wisdom. If you isolate yourself, you are raging against wisdom. If you say, no, I can't be around people, I don't want to be around people, I find people so draining, I know there's this new, this new epidemic of people suffering psychological exhaustion from just being around people because they were so used to not being around people and the whole new energy. Let me tell you something that will do your mind, it'll do your soul, it'll do your physical body so much good. Being around other people, it's that simple. Being social actually lengthens your life. And it doesn't even have to be nice people like the Christians, amen? They can be the not so nice people in your, I don't know, your residence group or your bowling group or your golf group. Being social is very good. Outdoor social distance. Anyway, but, but being social is extremely good for you. In examinations of the mind, for instance, it is clearly shown that the whole mind lights up in social situations in the way that it doesn't when you're watching TV or looking at your phone or eating or sleeping or indulging in any other activity, including exercise. Being around other people is the most blessed thing you can do. But being around the most blessed people is the most blessed of all. Would anyone say amen? amen. That is why Hebrews warns us Let's not neglect meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another. Especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. And you say, but I can encourage people by just sending them a text. No, be around them. Be with them. Build them up. Encourage them. Pray for them. But just be with them. Just as a little side to that, one of them, they're discovering that one of the most important things you can do for your heart health is to sing in a group of people together. 
apparently it just completely changes your mind, your brain waves, everything changes. But we've known that, Christians have known that, believers have known this for thousands of years, that to be with other Christians and to be with other believers singing the praise of God does our souls the power of good. Amen? Amen. Now, you, you, I don't have to preach this to you because you're here, okay? But you're here. But maybe some of you are thinking of backing off. Or maybe some of you are only here for the first time. Can I say to you, well done. Amen. Well done. Making the break and coming in, amen. Praise God. And saying, you know what? I'm not going to be dictated to by circumstance. I'm not going to be dictated to by the virus or by the fear that's constantly being put out to me. I'm going to be dictated by my faith. I'm going to gather with the people of God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I was going to say it to the people on the phone, but they're not on the phone yet. I'll give up to them now in the late service. Like, they're going to, la, la, last one of these, and then we're going to look at the psychological system or the spiritual immune system in action. The last one is this, stress. Stress. I'm giving you a gift, Jesus said. Peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give, the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or be afraid. Sustained stress is ruinous to your soul, to your spirit, and to your body. We have an amazing system of fight or flight built into us. God in his grace has given us this incredible fight or flight system. So basically it goes like this. Imagine you go into the woods tomorrow morning and you happen to meet a bear. You're in Ireland, you're not going to meet a bear. Hallelujah! A, a bold dog, who's with that? You go into the woods and you meet a dog that's snarling and barking at you and you have an instinct. You either pick up a stick and make a go for him, if you're stupid, or you turn around and you flee if you're smart. That system switches on. It's called your flight or flight system. And what happens is adrenaline is released and cortisol is released and all of these hormones are pumped into your blood system. Your heartbeat rises and your, 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 um, your blood vessels open up and your heartbeat goes up and your breathing rate goes up to help you escape and that's what that system is for. However, if that is always turned on, if it's constantly switched on, and every morning you get up and you face pure stress, if you face pure stress in your work, in your home, face pure stress in your circumstances, just how you go about your business, even amongst your friends, if you're continually in a state of stress, you are going to damage yourself. And you're going to damage yourself spiritually as well, brothers and sisters. And that's really, really important. You're going to damage yourself unless you trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. You need to trust in the Lord, brothers and sisters. I think of all the things over all of the years as a parent, as an employee, yeah, as a worker, as a, as a family member, as a church member, all the things that I've stressed out over, do you know what they amounted to? Nothing. They amounted to nothing. They came to nothing in the end. Let's be wise about what we get stressed out about. Amen? Amen. Let's be wise about what's really, really important to us. I want to look at, if you will, just as I finish up today, I want to look at immunity in action. Because as I had this idea, and I felt the Lord speak to me about this idea, I said, Lord, I need to find a classic biblical example of spiritual immunity in action. How do we see it actually worked out in the life of someone? Now, Jesus didn't strike me as being an unusually stressed out person, so I kind of had to move on from him. And I looked at a number of different people, but then I fell upon it and realized, yes, this is the person who, more than anybody else, as you look at the New Testament of the Bible, is the person who, to me, shows the immunity system in action more than others. I'm going to look at Paul. I'm going to look at Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Tom quoted 2 Corinthians chapter 4 already this morning. We're hashtag so in sync. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, believe it or not. Um, you'd imagine that we planned it, but we didn't. I'm going to look at, at these passages in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. For context, here's the context. Paul has been out working his backside off. He has literally paid with the scars in his back, the hunger in his belly. He's paid with nakedness. He's been beaten up. He's been imprisoned. He's been whipped. He's done absolutely 
everything to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. He has given his whole life over in every sense of the world. He has been stoned. He has been whipped. He's been beaten the whole nine yards. You'd imagine that for him, you could go, well, the Lord should be good to him because he's gone through an awful lot. But that's not how Paul saw it. Paul saw it as an adaptive immune system in action. Not in those words, but let's look at what God, what he says about his circumstances and about his situation. And maybe you will read in these words some of your own experience. Here's what he says. He says, we now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile jars of clay containing this treasure. We are like fragile jars of clay Anybody who thinks that he's anything more than a fragile jar of clay needs to just look at the world for a few minutes to realize how we are. And long before you look at the world, look at the scriptures that remind us that we are just a breath, that we are here in the morning, we're gone in the evening. Why Moses tells us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. We're just fragile jars of clay. It's all about the contents of that jar. He goes on to say this. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. No matter how clever you are, no matter how adaptive you are to your circumstances and your situations, no matter how many self-help, do-it-yourself books you read, you will at some way, some point realize it is not in your power to be able to resist. Somewhere in your life you're going to wake up and go, you know what, as much as I try, as much as I prepare, as much as I try to be ready for these circumstances, they still beat me. It's then that you begin to realize the power isn't from me, it's from the Lord above. Amen? Amen. He goes on to say, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not abandoned. We're struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our bodies. I love it when he says it. He says, we're hard pressed on every side. Lord, why is this happening? He says, but we're not crushed. Hallelujah. And I love his four but nots. But not. But not. But not. Whatever you're going through today, you may be hard pressed, but you're not crushed. Would anyone say amen? amen. You may be perplexed, but you are not in despair. Amen. 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 Do we believe it? Amen. You can be persecuted, but you are not abandoned. Hallelujah. You are not and will not be abandoned. You may be struck down this morning, but you will not be destroyed. And I love the way Paul is communicating these terms because it's clearly he is having a spiritual reaction to his physical circumstances. The physical circumstances, they are not great. And sometimes in our lives we have trials and situations that happen to us that are just not great. No, sometimes we have a blessed life and it's wonderful and we praise God for those days. But there's times when we are in trouble. And it's in those days that the spiritual, adaptive, immune system kicks in. Here goes, I wonder if at the end of his days, after all he went through, would Paul have said, actually, I would have changed that. I don't believe he would. I think he would have gone through it because it was in the going through that he experienced an encounter of Jesus Christ in power in his life. He goes on to say this. He says, that is why we never give up. We never give up. I'll never give up. Brothers and sisters, I want to say it today. I'm 54 years of age. By God's grace, I live to 104. Don't think I will, but by God's grace. I want to say it today with all of my heart. I will never give up. Amen. Will anyone say it with me? Amen. Will you stand with me for a second? Do you know what I, I want to challenge you? Just, just, I'm, I'm not finished yet, but I want to challenge you. Do you know what? What a great way to say it. I'm starting off 2022. Second Sunday, had first Sunday, second Sunday 2022, I want to declare today. I will not give up. Yeah. Will you declare with me? Yeah. Will you put your hands in the air? We're going to offer a piece of prayer. Father in heaven, together we say it. One, two, three. I will not give up. Let's say it one more time. I will not give up. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, hear our prayer. Would anyone say amen? amen? You take your seats again, guys. Take your seats again. We never give up. We keep going. If the government closed the doors, we'll go online. Would anyone say amen? amen? 
If another virus comes along, we're still going to gather in Jesus' name. If another trial or an economic crisis comes on, we are not giving up. We're going to keep going. Our bodies are dying, but our spirits are being renewed every day. And I love this. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Amen. Amen. Whatever you're facing, whatever we face, whenever we face it, it's small. It won't last very long. He goes on. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them all and will last forever. Can you imagine that? You take a small bit of trouble for a small time or a big bit of trouble for a big time. Yet you end up getting a weight of glory that vastly outweighs them all and will last forever. Anybody want that bargain? It's a bargain, brothers and sisters. We hand over our trials and troubles and we get glory in return. What a wonderful message that we have. What a wonderful good news that we have. And then Tom opened with these verses and I'm going to close with these verses. And I did not know that. There you go. Here we go. He says this. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. We fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. Let me tell you this. For a long time, for almost two years, you, me, and the whole world has been fixing our gaze on something that we cannot see. It's called a virus. Have any of you seen it? Did any of you kind of look in the cup and go, oh, look, there's the virus. No, we can't see it. What it is is a power that is beyond us that we can't see, we can't identify, we can't put our fingers on. There's probably some, there's probably some um, epidemiologists who are looking down in microscope looking at the DNA, but I've never seen it. Have you ever seen it? Anybody here ever actually seen the coronavirus? No? You opened the, the airing cupboard and there was the coronavirus waiting for you. No? And yet, our eyes have been fixed on it. Are you with me? How much more powerful if we can fix our eyes on the maker of heaven and of earth. How much more powerful if we fix our eyes on the spiritual God who is everlasting forever and ever and ever. How about we fix our eyes on the things that will never pass away. He says it, for the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Do you know what else is going to last forever? You're going to last forever. What do you want to take with you into your forever? The trials and troubles of this life are the hopes and the trust in Jesus Christ and the glorious expectation of his future hope. So do you want to give yourself a spiritual boost? Serve. Serve. Do you want to give yourself a spiritual boost? Read God's word. Nay, consume God's word. Yeah? yeah? Do you want to give yourself a spiritual boost? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and don't lean on your own understandings. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Do you want to give yourself a spiritual boost? Put your head down the pillow at night and say, whatever is coming, I trust in the Lord with all of my heart. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Will you stand with me? I'm going to pray that as we go into this year, Tom's already prayed, so he kind of robbed me close on this one, but that's all right. I want to say, Lord, I recognize that I've been looking at things I shouldn't be looking at. Fixing my gaze on things that aren't lasting and aren't eternal. I want to fix my gaze from this day going forward on things eternal. If that's your prayer, would you raise your hand? Would you inv can I invite you to raise the other hand with it? We're going to pray. The guys are going to lead us in the beautiful song, Trading My Sorrows. We're going to sing that in a second. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, that you have a purpose at work in our lives that we cannot see. We thank you, Lord, that though we are assailed at times, not always, but at times, with unseen hassles and unseen troubles, Lord, today we fix our eyes on the unseen solution, that is Jesus Christ. Today, Lord, we fix our eyes on what is eternal, not on what is temporary. Today, Lord, we lift our eyes from the darkness and put them on the light. We pray, and we'll get to this another day, that by your Holy Spirit, by your Holy Spirit, we would know that treasure alive in these jars of clay, Lord. I pray that we will experience new life and new revival at work in our hearts and in our souls. Lord, I pray that whatever we face this year, 
Whatever circumstance comes up and we don't know, we don't know tomorrow. Lord, whatever we face, we pray that our spiritual immune system will respond and we will look up and not in, in Jesus' mighty name and God's people.